Welcome back guys. Today I'm going to talk to you about some do's and don'ts when considering going for a veterans exam, uh, CMP exam, compensation and pension examination, whether it's ordered by the RO or by the board. So I'm going to talk about three major do's and don'ts and then I'm going to tack on a bonus one at the end. So make sure you watch to the end. Let's talk about it. Okay, so before I get into it, I just want to make sure you know, although I am an attorney, I'm not your attorney. This video is for informational purposes only. I'll drop some information in the description box for some resources for VSOs or other attorneys that can represent you in your matter. So I just want to make sure that's clear. I do want to give information, but I don't want to give you the impression that I can represent you. Okay, just about everybody, uh, just about every veteran that applies for some kind of veterans disability benefits is probably going to have to go for a VA examination. And if it's for a service connection claim, it's to determine whether the claim is related to the disability is related to service. If it's for an increased rating, it's to determine the current severity of it. So the first thing I want to make sure you avoid is to not be honest about the start of your disability, if it's a service connection claim, or the severity of your disability, if it's an increased rating claim. Um, I get to the question all the time because I Another one of the videos I say, like, if you say that your disability occurred many years uh, after service, it may be more of an uphill battle. And somebody said, well, what should I say when I say, what's the start of my disability? Be honest, okay? Don't make up a date. Don't pull some date out, out of your hat that is not accurate because what happens is your statement is going to be evaluated based on the other evidence of record. So if you say it started at... Uh, right away after service, but there's other evidence and record where you blatantly deny that you had this disability or any symptoms related to this disability, then it's going to look contradictory. And then your statement may not be, may not hold as much weight. Uh, when the RO or VA evaluates statements, uh, lay statements, meaning statements that are not made by a medical professional, they, uh, they consider the competency of the statement the credibility and the weight of the statement. So that credibility factor, you don't want to be considered incredible. Like this person is not being truthful about when the disability started. So as you know, or you may not know, just because a disability started well after service does not mean that you cannot be service connected for it. If there is competent evidence that connects your current disability to service, then you can still get service connection. There may be a delay. There may be evidence or medical uh, principles that say, yes, it can be delayed, even though it didn't happen right away. It can be delayed if they were exposed to, let's say, herbicides or radiation or things like that nature. They can be related, even if it's not right away after service. So don't, don't lie about when the disability started. Um, also, like I mentioned, if it's an increased rating claim, don't lie about the severity of it. Um, Usually the CMP examiners know whether it be a medical doctor, a physician assistant, a nurse practitioner, those are the ones that are usually completing the CMP examinations. They usually can vouch and say like, this person is not being truthful about their disability. Let's say you're going for orthopedic uh, disability evaluation for the knee. And you say like, basically you can't even get around. But when you go to the exam, they call your name, Miss or Miss Johnson. And you get up and basically skip your way into the exam room. The ex you don't think the exam examiner notices that, but they know. And they put that on the exam report that ex veteran basically skipped from the waiting area to the exam room. Does not appear that the knee is causing any problems or things of that nature. So be aware that the exam starts basically when you get into that building. If you have any problems, you want to make sure you tell the problems. Don't ex over exaggerate the problems. Um, a lot of times the examiner could say that it was malingering, meaning like there was dishonesty, over-exaggeration of what the veteran's symptoms really are. And then they really can't assess and give you a clear assessment or give the RO or a VA uh, employee a clear assessment of what's really going on with your disability. So don't over-exaggerate it. Um, I know also, let's say you're going for a PTSD exam and sometimes... Maybe it may be very difficult for you to go through the examination, just even talking about the events. That's understandable. These people are trained and they understand that it's very hard to talk about it. 
say that, communicate that is very hard, not shut down and not say anything because then the examiner has nothing to work with to decide whether, oh yeah, this these things that this person is experiencing is related to some event in service. Or if it's an IR claim, an increased rating claim to say like, okay, yeah, they basically can't do X, Y, and Z. Um, be forthcoming when you go to this examination. This is kind of your opportunity to say what's on your mind. Um, I know sometimes the veterans say like, oh, the examiner even asked me about this. Go ahead and put it out there because the examiner, if, if they don't put what you said, then it can possibly question the adequacy of the examination. So make sure you say, can you make sure you put, please include this in the report? And then the examiner may say, veteran wanted to make sure I included this in the report that he or she said this. Fine. And then an, another VA employee can assess, you know, the weight of that statement that you made to the examiner. So that's tip number one, to be honest when you go to these examinations, whether it's for service connection or for increased rating. Okay, tip number two about, it's a little bit more straightforward. If the RO or the board uh, orders the examination and says you need to attend the examination, don't not go to the examination. Let's say something's come up, communicate um, if you need to reschedule. And they have to reschedule because um, this is determined whether you get service connection benefits or increased rating benefits. They have to reschedule because this is a big determination of your benefits. So you need to communicate and communicate as soon as you know. If you know, like, oh, I'm going to be working that week that they schedule it, communicate that and ask to be rescheduled. Um, ask, call in or write, put a letter in. So, so that's on record that you asked for a reschedule so that if at some point if they don't reschedule, if by the time it gets to, let's say, appeal to the board, the board will notice it and say, the veteran requested that the exam be rescheduled. It does not appear that the veteran was ever rescheduled for exam, so we're going to go ahead and remand the matter, meaning send it back to the RO so that they can reschedule the veteran for examination. So communicate early and... <clears throat> And enough to have good cause why, not just because like, I don't want to come today. Um, if you have an incre increased rating claim and you don't go for a scheduled exam, it can possibly just be denied <clears throat> without further explanation. Under 38 CFR, what is it, 3.655, the RO, the VA can deny an increased rating claim if you don't go for a scheduled examination. So... You say that the, your disability has increased in severity. And the VA wants to verify that information and they schedule for exam. Go. Otherwise, it'll be a turnaround. It'll be an automatic denial. And that's not something you really can explain. You know, I didn't go in this part of the, uh, the, the regulations that you must go if you ask for increased rating and, and we don't know the current severity of it. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about CMP examinations Go to them. If you can't go to them, ask for another uh, time that you can actually attend. Before I get into the third tip, I want you to comment below. Let me know what branch of the government, you branch of the military you served in. And let me know if you have any other tips that you found helpful if you had a successful claim, whether it be for service connection or for increased rating. Um, you want to help other veterans out so that they can also be successful as well. Okay, the third mistake to avoid is not knowing if you're going for an increased rating and not knowing the criteria for whatever the increased rating you're going for. So if you watch my other videos, you know I refer to the handy dandy, the rule book that has all the rating criteria in it. And if you don't know what the criteria is, you may mistakenly say, hey, I deserve a higher rating, but not even knowing what the criteria is um, you may not say, oh, let me tell this to the examiner when I go in for the exam. So I'll give an example for, for let's say you pick the disability of migraines. That's diagnostic code 8100. And the rating, the rating code says that in order to get 10%, you need to have characteristic prostating, prostrating attacks averaging one in two months over the last several months. There are other criteria for 30 and 50. 50% is the highest rating you're gonna get for migraines under the scheduler code. Now, you need to show that you have characteristic prostrating attacks occurring on average once a month over the last several months. 
So here's the here's an idea. When you go into the examination, the examiner is usually going through a disability a benefits questionnaire, DBQ, and they're gonna probably ask you how often do your headaches occur. If you say, oh, they occur uh, once in the last nine months, that meets the criteria for a zero percent rating under the migraine code. So knowing kind of what you think about it before you answer the question, right? The the examiner is gonna ask you some questions. How you doing? Don't say fine. <laughs> this examination is to say everything that's wrong with you as it relates to that disability that you are, you know, that's in question. So don't say fine. Kind of know what the criteria is for the disability you're going and say, oh, okay, yes, if I had, let's say, um, back problems, I would say if I had any bed ordered, uh, doctor ordered bed rest because that's one of the criteria for a higher rating for a back disability. But kind of knowing what the criteria is, and you can look this up online as well, um, the federal rules and regulations uh, for veterans, bene veterans benefits, but kind of know what that is so that when you go into the examination, you go in with a purpose. You're going in there to tell them everything and as it lines up with a certain criteria because that's what you're there for to get a higher rating. All right, stay tuned for the, for the bonus tip, okay? Okay, here's the bonus tip. So I see this happen a lot. Um, veterans say that, oh, they don't think that their exam was adequate and uh, the doctor didn't listen to whatever may be in the problem or whatever they communicated. Okay, so this can be a basis for getting another exam, right? But it has to be, you know, particularly specific, right? So it can't just be like, oh, I didn't like the way they talked to me, so I want another examination. You can say, oh, if there's for a knee exam and they didn't use any measuring tools, a, a genometer, they didn't use any measuring tools, they didn't, it was pretty quick and, you know, they didn't ask me these questions about this, this, and this, right? Those are specifics versus just saying that, you know, I didn't like the exam and not having any particular reason, you know, why you should be entitled to another one. Give as much information about why you can say that the exam was inadequate. Um, I know there was a veteran before, he said he, he and his wife attended the examination and he was actually um, a medical professional as well, but not in that particular specialty. And he said that, you know, he had his wife with him, so it was another witness to the event and said that the person basically rushed him out. They were in there for less than 15 minutes and uh, the report didn't say this, this, and this, and didn't include this. It was very specific about why he thinks he should be entitled to an examination by someone else. So if you think that the examination was inadequate, you can always order an examination. So let's say you go to the examination. After you finish, you can request under Privacy Act, request a copy of that last examination that you went to so you can review it and see what the VA is reviewing. And then if you find that, oh, the, the person, the examiner left out some pertinent information, you can state it and ask for another examination and, um, and it'll be up to the RO or the board to decide whether, you know, you gave enough information or they say it was kind of not, it was vague about why you think the examination was inadequate. So don't get denied for the fact that you didn't explain well enough. So keep that in mind. Good luck. Thank you for your service to our country.